In this video, I'm going to analyze a typical switch DC first order problem. And the first step is to determine if the schematic actually is a switched DC first order problem. Let's see first if it's first order. It has resistors, it has voltage sources, but it only has a single capacitor, a single energy storage element, so therefore it is first order. If it had two capacitors or two inductors or a capacitor and an inductor, there'd be two energy storage elements, so it'd be second order. But this is definitely first order. Secondly, is it switched to DC? Well, all the sources in it are DC sources. There's no time varying sources. And secondly, the value of the sources change at time equals zero from this switch. It might have also instead looked like a 20 U of T source without the switch. That would have been 20 for time greater than zero or zero for time less than zero. But this schematic instead uses a physical switch to get our switch to DC value. So now that we've determined it is indeed a first order switch DC problem, let's begin the analysis. Now you'll notice that it asks to find I and I is this value here. It's the current through, the, through, the, uh, through a resistor. However, for all first order problems, no matter what is asked for, we're, we're always going to find either the voltage across the capacitor or the current through the inductor. So in this problem, we're going to begin asking, what's our initial voltage across the capacitor? And then we're going to ask, what is the time constant? And then we'll ask, what is the final value of the voltage across the capacitor? And then we'll plug the whole thing into our plug and chug equation, which for a capacitor looks like this. And that's true for time greater than zero. Next, we'll find the value that we were asked to find, which is I of t, and last, we'll find it for all time, as it asks up here, not just time greater than zero. So let's begin. Let's take a look at V0 first. So what V0 means is it means the voltage on the capacitor for time uh, less than or equal to zero. And so we firstly got to draw what that voltage is. We can draw it in either direction, but I think it's most it would be most typical to draw it with positive up. And so this is our first step in finding what V of t is to find out what its initial voltage is at time equals zero. And to do that, we're going to have to draw it for time less than zero. And we do that because for time less than zero, I'm going to draw that over here in this big space. That switch is closed. And since it's closed, see the arrow point is going opens it up at time equals zero. So if it's open for time greater than zero, it's got to be closed for time less than zero. I'm not even going to draw this because I don't care at this point. I'm not trying to find I. I'm trying to find that voltage across the capacitor. Now, for time less than zero, this capacitor isn't doing very much because you know that this is DC steady state. There's nothing switched. All the currents have stabilized. All the voltages have stabilized. And in a DC circuit, DC circuit, you can replace the capacitor with an open. And the voltage across that open is capital V naught. So let's see what that is. The best way to analyze a um, any kind of DC circuit is to ask where the current flows. And here you can see there's a pathway of current flowing in here, but there's absolutely no current that can flow out through here because it can't go through this open. And if there's no current flowing out here, then you know what the voltage drop is going to be across this resistor. By Ohm's law, Ohm's law says the voltage drop is V equals I times R. If there's no I, then no matter what the R is, the voltage across it has to be zero. And because there's no voltage drop across it, what it's saying is that V naught, which is the voltage here, with respect to here, is the same, because they're wires, as the voltage between these two points. And since this resistor doesn't drop anything, it's the same as the voltage between those two big blue points. That means that since there's 
since v naught is the same as this, and since there's no current flowing through the right side, flowing through, flowing through this one ohm resistor, if we want to find v naught, we could even simplify this further down to just a 20 volt source with a three. It's a pretty sad resistor and a nine ohm resistor. And this is what we want to find. This is our V naught. And it has to be because there was no voltage drop across that one ohm resistor. Well, now it's just a voltage divider. And you can see by the voltage divider law, V naught is equal to 20 times the resistor across which you're interested divided by the total resistance. So that's equal to 20 times, um, let's see, 9 over 12 is the same thing as 20 times 3 over 4, and that's the same as 15 volts. So our first step is to say V naught is 15 volts. Okay, next step is to find the time constant. And to find the time constant, you're going to draw it for uh, time greater than zero, but maybe not quite infinity. So this is going to be the time area that we're going to draw it. Let's begin. We've got a 20 volt source. We've got a three ohm resistor. Now in that region, that switch is open. So I'm just going to draw it as an open. We've got our nine ohm resistor here. Again, I'm not going to draw the current through it because at this point, we're still trying to find the voltage across the capacitor and we've got our capacitor. Now I can't say that capacitor looks like an open in this region because in this region between time equals zero and infinity, things are happening. We opened up that switch at time zero and there's definitely currents flowing. There's definitely voltages changing. Um, and we want to see what kind of resistance that capacitor sees. And by what resistance it sees, I mean, if you're to take that resistor, that capacitor out, we're not replacing it with a short, but what we're doing is we're just asking from the viewpoint of this capacitor, if we were trying to shove current up through here and out and return it through here, what kind of resistance does it see? And it should be obvious that the only way that you could push current through it is to go through this side. Can't go through the left since there's an open. And how much resistance does that capacitor see as it pushes current out here and sucks it up in here? And the answer is two resistors in series and R EQ equals one plus nine or 10 ohms. So if we put that capacitor back, that capacitor sees a total resistance of 10 ohms. Now we said that capacitor's value was 20 millifarads from the problem. And so tau is equal to RC equals 10 ohms times 20 millifarads. So that would be 200 millis and another way to write that is one fifth second. It's interesting that resistance times capacitance, ohms times farads, has the units of seconds. So that's the next step. We found the time constant for the circuit. Next section is to find V of infinity, V after a long time. What we mean by that is it the voltage on the capacitor after a really long time, after everything settled back down. And to do that, we're going to draw it at time equals infinity. Now at time infinity, I'm going to draw this again. Our switch is now open. 9, 1, and we've got our capacitor. So if we're drawing at infinity, anything that's changed has changed. There's nothing that's moving about here. There's no switches that are opening or closing at infinity. And so this is back to DC steady state. And in DC steady state, something we can do is replace the capacitor with an open circuit. So V of infinity, we have this circuit and we want to find this voltage. And it should be pretty clear that the only place that current could possibly uh, circulate in this circuit is nowhere. There's no, there's no close path for, for current to flow at all. 
And so with no currents flowing, the voltage across every resistor is zero. And so if this voltage is zero, and if that voltage is zero, then this voltage has to also equal zero. One thing I'd like to add is that in both of these regions, when you're drawing at time less than zero and time equals infinity, there should be, if you've done it correctly, there should be no switches. There should be no capacitors. They should be opens and there should be no inductors. Those should look like shorts. And there should be no U of T functions. Those will be all evaluated to either zero, if you're talking about time less than zero, or one, if you're talking about time greater than zero. So now we can tackle the easiest part of the problem, which is that the voltage across the capacitor is equal to this plug and chuck equation. Let's just check to make sure that I wrote down the equation correctly. When time is zero, e to the zero is one, and so we end up with v of infinity plus v naught minus v of infinity. So at time equals zero, we end up with just v naught, and that makes sense. That's what we should have, v naught at time equals zero. For time really big, e to the minus something really big goes to zero, and so all of this goes away, and all we're left with is v of infinity. So that makes sense. So our equation makes sense, and plugging in our numbers, we get zero plus 15 minus zero, or just plain old 15 e to the minus t. And although I could say divided by 1 fifth, it's easier just to simply multiply by 5. So it's 15 e to the minus 5t, and that is volts. And that is the voltage across the capacitor. Unfortunately, that's not what we're asked to find. We're asked to find something different. We're asked to find i of t. Now, when we're asked to find i of t, you've got to somehow figure out what that i of t is given our voltage source. So, first of all, it's important to realize that this is only true for time greater than or equal to zero. Hopefully, it's clear that for time less than zero, that voltage across the capacitor is going to be a steady 15 volts. So if the question asked, what is the voltage across the capacitor for all time, we might have instead written it's equal to 15 for time less than zero, or 15 e to the minus 5t. I'm just going to, instead of writing t5, I'm going to put that in the more typical algebraic notation, which is putting the number first, 5t for time greater than zero. We're asked to find the current, though, through this, through this resistor. And so let's, to see how to figure out how to get that current given the voltage, let's redraw our circuit one last time for time greater than zero in this region. And we end up with the left part of the circuit, which I'm not going to draw, because with the switch open, just like I discussed earlier, there's no reason to draw it. It doesn't contribute anything. And so now I've got this capacitor. Now, I could draw it as a capacitor, but I'm going to draw it as a voltage source because I know what the voltage is. The voltage is guaranteed to be 15 e to the minus 5t. We just derived that. So if this is a 1 ohm and if this is a 9 ohm resistor and we're asked to find the current through it. So while this circuit is a voltage divider, since we're asked to find current, it's even easier. Just by Ohm's law, I of t has to be equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So here it's going to be 15 e to the minus 5t all over a total of 10, 1 plus 9 ohms. So it might be a little bit easier to write that as 1.5 e to the minus 5t amps. And of course that's only for time greater than or equal to zero. And then the last step is it asks, the question asks, what is it for all time? So let's expand that answer back for time less than zero. Let's ask, what's going on for time less than zero? For time less than zero, we've got the full circuit that, that switch is closed. 
we've got nine ohms here, one ohm, and remember for time less than zero, we're in DC steady state, so this, the capacitor is like an open, and we have to find out what the current is for time less than zero. So again, since this is open here, we only need to ask ourselves where is current flowing, and it can only flow in this direction, and so the current for time less than zero has to be equal to, by Ohm's law, 20 over 3 plus 9, which is 20 over 12. Let's see, divide both sides by 4. We get 5 thirds. And so we get 5 thirds amps. And that is the complete answer to the problem for all time.